Here is a Hunter Century oscillating table fan. This fan dates to around the mid to late 30s, or not mid to late, early to mid 30s. It is a two speed, it's a type F10. Pretty interesting fan here. It's either made by Century or was bought out by, or the company Century was bought out by Hunter in the, in the Depression, and they decided to use their designs here because the fan has a lot of very similar styling cues to a actual sensory fan like this type G3 here from the 20s. It uses the same motor, same base, same blade set. As you can see, I've restored this fan. It's actually the first oscillating table fan I actually attempted to restore. And that don't look too bad. The fan was in decent shape originally, but I figured I'd give this a good candidate to be restored because it definitely needed some help when I got it. The biggest thing I had to repair on it is the collar here that attached onto the base from the motor. And the original was made of pot metal. And unfortunately over time it this stuff started to disintegrate and pretty much would fall apart right in your hands. So I had to do some engineering, re-engineering, and to clop together some parts there and retrofit some parts. The new collar you see there is actually aluminum. And I have the fan, the motor shafts and a rubber bushing. Unfortunately, that does this my design there is not the, really the best. It doesn't really allow the fan to oscillate too well, and it's actually giving me some fits for the pin here on the oscillator arm likes to pop out of the motor and doesn't really want to oscillate too well so that's some things I gotta work on still but otherwise the fan runs pretty damn nice unfortunately there is a big flaw to it though which makes it completely unsafe to operate though and what's going on here is that whenever the fan's powered on the entire fan becomes energized with electric Posing a big shocking hazard. Now, when the fan's off, and I can touch it all day long, and it will not light me up. But when it's running, it will. And I'm going to prove to you what's going on here. This little device here is a voltage detector. Now, I know some electricians, more seasoned electricians, will always frown upon use of these devices here. And, would say, why wouldn't you use a meter? Well, I would use a meter, but I don't have any easy reference to ground as the ground, the core is not grounded. And then only grounding point is actually in the receptacle all the way over there. So for video demonstration, I'm gonna use this dude. So we're gonna to touch up against the fan. Now, as you can see, it's not making any noise. I'll, I'll prove to you here that it does detect voltage and functions as placing on the cord which is plugged in shows that it has power. Now watch this. So we're gonna power the fan on. I don't know, he doesn't really want to start straight from high. But watch as I touch the fan. All the way around the fan. Now, I would understand this thing picking up voltage if you touched it against the motor and in the base where the switch is located, but not out here in the outer portions of the guard. See, like I said, and I know that this thing shocked me because I was kneeling down touching up the bench here a little bit after I buffed it out, put it back on the fan, and the fan was actually running, just have run it in a little bit. It freaking let me up pretty bad. So, yeah, pretty dangerous. And what's going on there probably is that the neutral conductor and the head wire, which is actually still original on the fan, and the motor is making contact with the metal parts of the motor. It's an easy fix. I think I've just got to replace the head wire. I mean, it's definitely the neutral. That's not the actual leads making the is causing the issue is because the fan runs distinctly at two different speeds. I mean, if I was doing that, both leads are 
make a contact that will sort out against each other and not make the family, correct? Carefully turn it down to low. Now, even that brass tag is energized down there, so it's really dangerous to operate. Now, like I said earlier, the oscillation on the fan, it works a little, it does work, but with the design I had to engineer to make the fan stable again, it does not allow it to freely spin. There's something I need to do some fine tuning on to in order to get it to oscillate. So, in case I do fix that, I'll remake the video, but of course, this is what it is. The fan does oscillate on like all these older century made fans, oscillation is done with the brass lever there on the back. You just flip it into the other direction and it'll simply oscillate. Of course, I can't touch that because once again, it's a freaking lightning rod. And there you go. There was the 10 inch Hunter Century Type F10 oscillating table fan so thank you for watching and i hope you enjoyed the video everybody and we'll see you next time